Welcome to another Parker screencast and I have a question for you. Let's say you're pulling a heavy load like this mom is pulling uh, at their picnic. What is the best way to be pulling that load? Should she be pulling it uh, more horizontally, more vertically? Well to analyze this we would have to be able to apply some physics. So up to this point we've been dealing with physics or uh, with forces in one dimension. So either the forces are acting purely horizontal like the force of drag and the, the force applied or purely vertical like the force of gravity and the force normal and we can analyze these forces separately to look at the, the situation but what if we're dealing with an, uh, more real life situations where the force is not acting just horizontal but that it's acting somewhere in between the horizontal and the vertical it's acting at an angle. Uh, to be a true physics student, you have to be able to analyze these forces acting in between the vertical and the horizontal. So a quick reminder, we have uh, our force equations. And then from projectile motion, we had trigonometry because we were dealing with things acting in between the horizontal and the vertical. So here is a man pulling a load. And we're going to look at this just from the perspective of uh, vectors. You have the force of gravity down. You have a normal uh, force applied, uh, which is going along his arm. That's where he's applying the force. And then there's a normal force. Just like with projectile motion, we're going to break these down into the uh, vertical and horizontal components of the force applied. And then we can look at this purely from the vertical perspective and the horizontal perspective. Now you may have noticed in this case that the normal force is a little bit smaller than the force of gravity. Well, why is that? Well, the load that he's pulling is not accelerating in the y direction. So all the forces in the y direction must cancel each other out. In other words, the cart is not changing its velocity. Its acceleration is zero. So the sum of all the forces has to be zero. Well, we have a normal force up and a y component of the pull going up. So these two forces must balance out the force of gravity. So in this case the normal force is a little bit smaller than the force of gravity. Then we have an x component of the force. This is the force causing the acceleration of the load. Uh, what if we're instead of pulling up we're pushing down? Here's a little boy pushing a truck across the grass. So we have a force of gravity down, the applied force, and a normal force. So we're going to break this into the xy components just like before. And then we're going to look at the sum of all the forces. Now, once we break our applied force or whatever force is acting at an angle into the x and y components, we don't need to have it there anymore. We can, for the most part, ignore it once we have the components. Because we're going to always view these problems from the perspective of the vertical and horizontal components. So here you can see there are two forces acting down, one force acting up. In this case, the force normal is greatly increased because not only is there the force of gravity pulling down on the truck, but also the sum of the force that the boy is applying to the truck is in the downward direction. And again, the truck's not accelerating in the, in the y direction, in the up-down direction. So these forces must be balanced. So the force normal here becomes the combination of the force applied in the y direction and the force of gravity. And then of course the force acting in the x direction is just the x component of the force being applied. Now for the case of the boy pushing this truck, the added normal force is not a big deal. But what if you're doing something like pushing a car? Here you got a guy pushing across or horizontally, but he's also pushing down a little bit, which is actually increasing the normal force. And if you remember from our friction equation. If you increase the normal force, you increase the friction. And he's actually making his job harder. So if you're able to, applying a horizontal force is much better. Alright, so let's look at a problem. We've looked at it from vectors. Let's put some numbers in there. We have a, a crate being pulled horizontally along a frictionless surface. And we want to know what is the normal force on the box and what is the box's acceleration. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, draw my free body diagram. These are all the forces acting on the box. And of course, I label them. 
Uh, I've also labeled some of my variables here, the variables that were given in the problem. Next step, break the force that is at an angle into the x and y components. So now I have two forces going up, the y component, the normal force, and the force of gravity going down. And then there's a uh, horizontal component. So, so how do we find the normal force? Well, we're going to look at all the forces. Since the normal force acts in the y direction, let's look at all the forces acting in the y direction. Uh, and we'll start with Newton's second law. So the forces acting in the y direction are the y component of the force, the normal force, and the force of gravity, which is negative because it's acting opposite to the other two forces. And that causes the mass to accelerate in the y direction, but since the mass is not accelerating in the y direction, we realize that these three forces must be balanced. Solve this for the force normal, since that's what we're looking for, and substitute. Instead of Fg, we're going to put in Mg as indicated here. But then we need Fy. How do we find Fy? Well, that's where we need to go to our trigonometry. Remember if we have these uh, a, a force applied, we can rearrange our vectors so that it makes a nice triangle. Now we have a right triangle. These two are perpendicular to each other. That's our hypotenuse. And we can use SOHCAHTOA to solve. Remember sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Well, in this case, Fy is the opposite. The hypotenuse is f. We can solve this for fy so that uh, we have fy equal to f sine theta. We can do the same thing for the adjacent side or the cosine. We've discovered that fx is equal to f cosine of theta. If we have a force going in the downward direction, it's the same kind of thing. Remember that our angle is usually relative to the x direction. But anyway, going back to here, from uh, from that analysis, we realize that uh, Fy is equal to F sine of theta. So force normal is equal to Mg minus F sine theta. And we know the value of all these uh, variables. So we plug it into our calculator. We get 54.6 newtons. Now my recommendation is when you put this into your calculator, when you put in the normal force equal to Mg F sine theta, that you do it all in one shot. Don't break it up into parts. If you break it up into parts, you're far more likely to make mistakes. You're probably going to get rounding errors. It ends up being more work. Uh, so it's far better to just put in all the uh, calculations in one shot. So we have 54.6 for our normal force. What about the acceleration? Well, in this case, there's only one force acting in the x direction. So we're going to start again with Newton's second law. But this time focus on the x direction. All the forces acting in the x direction are only fx. That's it. And that is causing the mass to accelerate. So we solve this equation for a. And remember, fx is equal to f cosine of theta divided by m. We put in our numbers. Uh, we could do a quick check here. Uh, this is 57 newtons. A newton is kilograms times meters per second squared. Then we're dividing by kilograms. Kilograms cancel out. We're left with just meters per second squared. We have an acceleration of 6.1. What if we were to add in a force of friction to this situation? Well, it's really not a whole lot different than if we didn't have friction. Only this time, when we look at the sum of the forces in the x direction, we shall have the x component of the force applied, fx. But now we're going to subtract the force of friction because it's acting in the direction opposite. Solve this for A. Substitute. Instead of Fx, we're going to put in F cosine theta. Instead of force of friction, we put in mu force normal. Well, remember the previous result when we found the normal force before. It's not equal to mg in this case because the normal force uh, is a little bit smaller because some of this force applied is relieving the force between the surface and the box. So the normal force uh, is, again, not mg. We calculated it earlier to be 54.6. So we plug in our numbers and we get a slightly smaller acceleration, 3.76, and that should make sense. If we have a friction force acting, then there's going to be uh, less force going to accelerating the box. So to answer our question, 
which way is the best way for this mom to be pulling the wagon? It depends. I wish I could say that there was uh, an easy answer to it. But solving the equation in terms of all of our variables, we would get something that looks like this. So if you look at this, the greater the force she applies, the greater the acceleration. That should be obvious. But then the angle at which she's pulling this, uh, this wagon is going to impact the acceleration as well. So now that you've gotten a basic taste of forces in two dimension, make sure this doesn't happen to you. You know how to analyze the forces. Signing out. We'll see you in a few days. Take care.